um, in, in our last conversation, you said that it's like a dream for you to go and live in a French speaking place and have this kind of, uh, you know, immersion experience. But I know you spent some time in, in France, right? How was that? How long was that? Were you there to do what? Study the French language? Did you have mm -hmm. uh, French friends? I would imagine. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure this left some kind of impact on you. Um, I went to Lyon for three weeks in 2018. It was in the summer holidays before my final year of high school started. And it was an exchange program through my school. So um, that was an amazing experience. I really enjoyed it. Three weeks isn't a long amount of time, mm. but what happens is when you're away from home and you're in this novel environment and you're doing new things every day, every three weeks, in the three weeks, you do so many activities and you experience so many things that it, that three weeks, you do as, you do as many new things and exciting things as you might do in like four months at home. <laughs> so course. even though it was three weeks, you know, it felt like a, it felt like I have this memory of being there and being, it didn't, you know, it feels like longer than the three weeks in a sense is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I stayed with, I stayed with my exchange partner. I stayed in his apartment. We went to school every day. Um, I have a lot of, I have a lot of fun. You know, I made friends. I, I went there, I went there thinking I learned on that trip that, I'm not very interested at all in like monuments or even architecture or things like that. I'm interested in the people because I realized that I literally, I didn't care. I didn't care about much else other than just having the opportunity to hang out with my exchange partner and his friends and have a good time. Like that's, that was the highlight of the trip. And I think it will be the highlight of every trip I ever do going to a place and interacting with the people. And I, I think I learned that on that trip. It helped my French a lot as well, uh, for sure. Um, and also it helped my French, helped my meta French development, not just my linguistic skills, but it created one of those experiences with the language, which creates this attachment. And this, I, I all of a sudden I have part of my identity, which is more attached with French. I have friends, from there who I lived all of these shared experiences with. And I feel that, you know, they're genuinely my friends and I have these friends who live their whole life in French in another place. So beyond just, it helped me linguistically, but then it helped me in a meta-linguistic way where now I have, I have French friends. I have this other place, which I really liked. I have these experiences lived through the French language, positive experiences, that kind of thing. 100% and, you know, in a way I find it, quite unlikely that I'll have a repetition of this experience that I've had here, right? But, um, you know, I think that I can give myself, you know, just like these little slices of what I've had here, but with other languages, you know, like when I go to Russia, I would like to stay there for at least a month. And I'm sure I could make a lot of progress in my Russian in that time, but um, I want, I want, sure, it's nice to see monuments, like you said, but I want to interact with people. I want to meet people. I want to uh, meet people in social events. I want to be invited to things. I want to see people that I know that live there, you know, because mm. it's just like an investment in, in yourself as a human, but, you know, it's investment in the long-term strategy of language learning. And I mean, they go hand in hand. It's not necessarily that you know, you do one and you want to do one more than the other, but I mean, it's just, there's just such human things that go hand in hand. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have these you kind of experiences, you don't have to consciously be, you don't have to con consciously be like trying to artificially cr create it. If you're aware of it and it's important to you, it happens. You, I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with consciously planning something. Um, almost in my, in, in, in my opinion, if you consciously plan something, I, I think that also, I, I thought about this when I was younger. I think if you consciously plan so something and you act in a in a way which you have thought about and you have chosen to act, I think that is more authentic than an impulsive reaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just as a little little sidebar, because that's who you've that's you've chosen to do that. You've chosen to be that person, so that is your that's who your that's more authentic to who you want to be. But anyway, yeah, you don't even, you don't even necessarily have to. 
consciously plan these things, what happens is you know you know it's important. So when you get the opportunity to apply for that exchange, bang, your name is on the list. You know what I mean? Because right. you, you know it's it's going to be super valuable for you. Sorry. No, yeah, no, I, I completely agree <laughs> with what you're saying. I mean, I, I, I the thought just popped into my mind in that very instant. It's just like, you know, in this language learning community, like, you know, I, I, I've learned to res, I've learned to respect people for what they want to do with languages, but 